When you first transition your journey from Excel to Power BI, the very first thing that you'll realize is that where the heck is the VLOOKUP function? Now, the bad news is that Power BI does not have the VLOOKUP function, just like Excel. But the good news is that Power BI has got many techniques where you can apply not only Excel-like VLOOKUP, but go way beyond what Excel can do in a very convenient way. Let me share with you some very interesting lookup techniques that are going to help you solve some very interesting problems. Let's start. My first trick is leveraging the native relationships in Power BI. You would probably not understand that in case you haven't worked with Power BI, but let me present to you a scenario and hopefully that will make sense. So I'm in Excel and that's where I have one data set, which is my sales data, which has got some standard columns like you would expect the order number, what product was sold, date was sold, the quantity and the price. Simple as that. Now, in order for me to get any understanding about the product, I have the product key through which I can write a VLOOKUP on my second sheet and I can pull the information about that particular product key that could be the name of the product the cost of the product the color the model the frames the subcategory whatever information I'd like to pull I can do that using a VLOOKUP function right here now here is my question I would like to know that how many units or quantity was sold for different colors of the products so for which I have to use the product key right here apply a VLOOKUP on my second sheet on this particular column or an XLOOKUP in case you are an XLOOKUP fan and then I have to find the color of the product that color column which is right here needs to come on sheet number one right here as the color and then I can do the pivot or I can do the filter or whatever I'd like to do. Now let's just see how can you do that in Power BI and it's ridiculously simple. To begin my work I have loaded the two tables the sales and the products table in my data model in my Power BI and what I'm going to do is because I know that I have to do a lookup between the two product key columns between the sales table and the products table I am going to form the relationship. This relationship is like doing a virtual VLOOKUP without actually physically creating columns of VLOOKUP. So product key dragged from this table over to this particular table. Make sure that the column that you're linking is correct. Product key right here, product key right here. One to many relationship, click on save and this works fine. Now, if I just go back to the visual and I create a blank table right here. In the table, I'm obviously going to have the products and the color presented right here. Note that I have not written any kind of lookup in my sales table. So if you want to quickly take a look at the sales table, here is my sales table and you can see that in the sales table, there is no column created. Otherwise, you would have created that column in Excel. So I am just going to leverage the relationships that I have built right here between the two tables to do the lookup behavior. So I'm going to go over to my visual once again and take my color, drop that in the visual right here. Pretty good. I get all the colors against which I want to find out that how many units are sold, which is nothing but a very simple sum calculation. And for that, I have written a measure, which is nothing but quantity sold. And that is nothing but the sum of the sales quantity column. Simple as that. Now, once I drag this particular calculation off to my visual, you're going to see that we get the quantity sold by the color. Not only that without writing any kind of lookup you can have any of the columns pulled from the products table and then do your calculations so for example if I don't really wanted to see against the color but I wanted to see against the category I can just go over to my products table and get the category right here and I am now taking a look at the quantity sold against the different categories which is beautiful now imagine if your products table had seven eight nine ten columns you would not have to write a single fee lookup and that's awesome about relationship now before you go I want to talk about two critical rules that you want to follow before you build that one-to-many relationship. Now, if you take a look that we have been able to build a relationship between the product key and the product key right here, the column that you are linking, which is this particular column, which falls on the one side of the relationship should not have any blanks. Let's just go take a look. So if I just go and take a look at the products key column, which was on the one side of the relationship, and if I just do the drop down, I am not going to see any blank values in this particular column. That is rule number one. Rule number two is that this particular column, again, on the one side of the relationship that I'm using, Using to link the two tables should also not have blank values. That means no duplicates allowed. In Excel, if you write a VLOOKUP, obviously uh, you get the first value found. It's no problem. You don't get an error. But in case you have a duplicate here, you would not be able to build that one-to-many relationship and that is not going to work. Those are the two rules that you have to keep in mind for leveraging lookup behavior through relationship. Let's just move on to my next trick. Quick introduction in the video in case you're liking the video so far and you're wondering that how can I learn these skills of writing good DAX good data modeling, the M language behind Power Query, and all of the nuances of Power BI that makes it work. I have brilliant courses on Power BI, especially the Power Query part, the DAX part, data modeling part, and the M language part. In the courses, I take you from a beginner level and take you to more advanced concepts, try to explain you the logic of how things are working so that you feel confident in applying the learnings to even on your own data sets. Hundreds and hundreds of students have joined my courses and they have benefited a lot. 
In case you're interested, the link for the courses is going to be down in the description of the video. Let's get back to the video. All right, let's just take a look at another interesting problem that you might have to face while doing real-time calculations, which is also somehow related to lookup tricks. Now, let's just say that I ask a question that for all the unique prices that we have for the product, so a product could have $1.33 or $2.29 or $2.5, for all of these unique prices that we have, how many models are available against this? So technically, what I'm trying to ask you is that for all of these prices, 2.50 as a dollar price. If you just take a look at the products table right here, how many unique models of the product, which is this particular column, is available? So I will obviously want to do unique count for this particular column. LL road frame is appearing multiple number of times, and I would like to remove the duplicates and find the count. For which I've written a very simple measure, which is nothing but unique models right here, and I'm doing a distinct count of the products and the model column as simple as that. And the unique price is obviously coming off from my sales table, and that is dragged right here. Now let's just drag this column off to my visual and let's just take a look at what happens. Now, once I drag the unique models off to my visual, you're going to see that it's not really possible that for all the prices that I have, I have 119 models available. So what's the problem here? If I just go take a look at the column right here and I select this particular column, I'm going to see that there are actually 119 unique values and that is the value that is repeated all across in the pivot table. What's going on right here? The other very critical thing that you need to understand while working with relationships or lookup tricks in Power BI is that once you have created this one to many relationship between the two tables, only all the columns of this table are allowed to filter the sales table and not the other way around. If you take a look at the relationship direction, it's flowing downwards and not really going upwards. This is not, not what Power BI allows. Now, technically, if you think about it, the column that I'm using to filter, which is nothing but the unit price right here, I'm trying to take all the unique values from this particular column and I'm trying to to find out that what are the values in this particular table. So I'm trying to apply this column as a filter on a calculation that is built on this particular table, which is nothing but the unique models right here. This is not allowed. So a lot of people, what they're going to do is they're going to alter the structure of the model, which is not a good habit. So what they're going to do is they're going to right click on this, go to the properties. And instead of having a single direction of the filter, which is this way, they're going to make the filter in both the directions. Now, all of the calculations are going to follow this particular pattern. That means they can come right here and they can go right here, which is not the right thing to do. What you can do is selectively do this for one or two calculations for whatever you would want, but do not alter the entire behavior of the model. Let me show you how that is going to work. So if you would want the reverse lookup behavior to happen, what you can do is you can wrap your calculation around in the calculate function. And I'm going to say, hey, do the distinct count of all of the products, but I would want to apply a bi-directional filter. I'm going to use the cross filter function for that. In the cross filter function, I'm going to put the left column name, which is nothing but the product key, the column that I have used to link. And then the next column that I'm going to put is nothing but again, the product key, which is going to be from the product stable. And I'm going to say that the relationship direction is going to be both. That's my cross filter. That's my calculate. Now, if I happen to run this particular calculation, you're going to see that we get the right result and we get the right answers. This is the correct way to handle search calculations and not apply bi-directional filters. Let's move on to my next case and my next trick. My next trick is how do you exactly replicate the behavior behavior of an actual VLOOKUP function in Power BI. At the moment, what we have taken a look at is relationships to filter the data, but we have not literally written a VLOOKUP formula as a column, just as the way that we write it in Excel. Here is the case. So let's just say that I'm trying to find out total sales for which the calculation is going to be, hey, why don't you take the quantity, multiply by the unit and find the value for every single row, and then you sum it up. And for which, if I just take a look at my visual, I have this category right here, accessories, bikes, clothing, and components, and for which I have calculated total sales. And if you take a look at the measure for that, it's very simple. I am just going in every single row of the sales table. I am taking my quantity, multiplying that with the unit price, and eventually I'm totaling all of that. And that is nothing but my calculation. Now comes a twist. Let's say somebody asks you that, hey, I don't really want to calculate sales on the unit price, but I want to calculate sales on the listed price of the product. So I want to calculate like listed sales. How do you actually do that? Obviously, the quantity is going to come from this particular column. But if you think about it, the listed price is there mentioned only one in the products table against every single product, which is nothing but the list price. So what I need to do is if I were working in Excel, I would have to write a VLOOKUP using the product key, get the list price, convert that into a column in the sales table, have that column right here, and then carry out my multiplication of quantity into the list price. How do you do that? Now, there are multiple ways of doing this. I'm going to show you the Excel way first, which is probably not the right way that I'm going to show you the Power BI way. The Excel equivalent of writing a VLOOKUP function in Power BI is nothing but the relationship 
related function. So how do you do that? I'm just going to right click on this table and make a new column. Note that I'm just doing this to teach you that you can literally replicate the behavior of XLOOKUP or VLOOKUP, but it's not really ideal to do that. Now I'm going to call this column as list price and I am going to write the function called related and you can see that it gives me all the suggestions from the product column that you can pull apart. So I can just pull apart the list price. Note that in the related function, you just have one input, unlike the VLOOKUP function, which has three or four inputs. Now I'm going to close the bracket and press enter. This is ridiculously fast. I have about 100,000 rows of data and within a flash of a second, it gave you the listed price right here. In case any of the product code was not found in the products table, this is going to return you a blank, which is also a good check in case you are lacking any products which are there in the sales, but not there in the products table. But nevertheless, I have been able to find the price. Now I can go ahead and do the quantity into list price and I can do my calculation. Now, before I will teach you the right method of doing it by not creating the column, I want to talk about a few rules that you have to keep in mind for the related function to work perfectly. The first rule is that if you want to use the related function in Power BI, you need to ensure that the two columns need to be linked using a one to many relationship. So you can see that we have the relationship built um, between the two tables right here. If I just quickly expand that, you can see that we have the product key light right here and the product key right here somewhere. And we've been able to build a relationship. Unless there is this relationship, the related function is not going to work. You need to have the one to many relationship. The second rule is that the lookup or the related function should only be written on the many side of the relationship, which is right here. And we have written the related function right here, nothing but as a column called the list price. The third rule, which is very important, the related function necessarily works in a row context. What do I mean by that? If you take a look at the sales table right here, you're going to see that the related function has worked for every single row of the table. That means the context or the cell or the place where it's working is nothing but a row of a table. And that's what I mean by row context. If you do not have a row context, the related function is not going to work. This is super, super, super important. When you're working in Excel, you don't realize that we're working in cells and cells are by default nothing but the rows of the table. So we don't even realize that. Now here we have a column, but we can also create a measure. Keeping these three, three rules in mind, let's just go ahead and delete this particular column. So I'm just going to comment it out, not really have this column as a column created, but I'm going to go ahead and write a measure instead where I start using the related function. So I'm going to go ahead and start writing a new DAX. And the calculation of this particular list sales measure that I have made is like really simple. I'm going to say, hey, first of all, because I know that the related function is going to work only in a row of a table. So I need to create that row of a table by using the sum x function. I say that first you go inside every single row of the sales table and then you write your related function. So I'm going to write my related and I'm going to pull apart the price. So related. And then I'm going to say, hey, I want to take a look at the list price, multiply that list price with the quantity. So what is my quantity? My quantity is nothing but in my sales quantity column. And this is kind of good to go. Now I will save it. I'm going to run the calculation and we have the nothing but the list sales presented right here. My next trick is how do you do multiple values of lookup in Power BI? Now this is like a sum if count if behavior that you're trying to pull off in Power BI. Let me show you how that works. So before I go ahead, take a look at the case. Obviously the sales and the products table are linked right here using this simple relationship. And now if I just go to my products table, I am going to ask myself a question that for this particular product, what is the maximum selling price? I can know that here is a listed price, but what has been the maximum selling price of this particular product? Now, if you were working in Excel, you would probably probably go ahead and write a sum if or a max if function, not a sum if, but a max if function. Technically, if you're solving it in a rudimentary manner, you would probably take this particular product key, which is 210, apply this product key over right here. Actually, I will just go ahead in the product key column and say number equals to, and I'll write 210, click on okay. And that's what I have at the moment. We don't really have a product key 210. So I'm going to go back and find another product. So let's just say 256. I'm going to go right here and find another product key, which is let's say 200. 256. So instead of this 256, I hope this product exists and we have this particular product. Now, in case this product was sold multiple number of times, you can see that this product has just sold once. In case this product was sold multiple number of times, I would have seen probably multiple list price right here. I want to go ahead and find the maximum unit price for this particular product. How do I do that? Now, in case you were working in Excel, this would have been a max if function, but let's just see how does it happen in Power BI. So I'm going to go ahead and create a column for this. And this is not really the right way to do it. I'm just teaching you a method to solve the problem. But I'm sure once you understand the formula used, you can use it in behaviors that you find it most appropriate. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to make a new column, and I'm going to start to write like a max if kind of behavior. So I'm going to call this as max selling price. That's my column. And the max selling price is going to be first of all, take this value, apply it as a filter on my sales table, and then whatever values are remaining, then you find the max of that. Now, how do you say all of that? 
All that you do is that you write a function called related table. Now, obviously, related table function is used on the one side of the relationship, not on the many sides. So if you take a look at my products table right here, in my products table, this is the one side of the relationship, and that is where I'm using the related table function. That means it returns you all the matched values against the relationship that you have made. So I'm just going to go right here. I'm going to say, hey, related table, and I'm my sales is my related table, the relationship that I have used. At the moment, if I press enter, this is going to give me an error because there could possibly be many values that this particular formula is returning. And all of those values can't really fit inside a cell. What I can do is I can probably do like a count rows of this table, close the bracket, press enter. And I can see that for this particular product, 215, I have 201 instances of values found in the sales table. Now, I don't really want to do the count. I want to do a max. So I can say, hey, go inside every single row of this particular table. And in every single row of this particular table, do what? Please do your calculation, which is the unit price. Uh, find the max of that. Close the bracket, press enter. And what you get is the maximum price that was sold for every single product. So this is an interesting way of doing max if, sum if kind of calculations against relationship. Not really the right example to create a column. But once you understand that how the related table function works, you can use it in ways that you suit best. All right, my next trick has to do with in case you are not working with any kind of relationship in Power BI, then how do you do a VLOOKUP? That's very interesting. Now, this is not really the right example that I'm showing at the moment. It doesn't have a lot of context. But once you understand that how this function works, I'm sure you'll be able to put it to a good use. So for the moment, if you take a look, we have the sales table and we have the budgets table right here. I'm going to show you the budgets table real quick. If you take a look at the budgets table, we just have three columns. We have the category. We have how much was the budgeted sales against that and the period. And the period is, by the way, months. So if you just scroll down right here in this column, you're going to see all July's, all August and all of that as the start of the month date. In the sales table, I want to know that for this particular product, especially not the product, but for, for the category of this product, what was the total budget in the month of July? That's all that I want to know. So for which you can write a lookup value function, especially in those scenarios where you do not have a relationship. So I'm going to go ahead and start to create a new column. Now this is, I'm again repeating that, creating columns, especially in your fact tables, is going to bloat your models and I would not recommend creating columns. I'm just showing you one unique case of lookup value function. In case you are writing a lot of lookup value functions, it's highly likely that you are making the model incorrectly. But here is a way to understand the lookup value function. So I'm going to write this is my budgets and I'm going to go ahead and start to write my lookup value function. I'm going to go ahead and say the lookup value function, which is very, very similar to the lookup function in Excel. Now it says, hey, what do you want to see as a result? So what do you want to see as a result? So the result is going to be nothing but the budget. So I'm going to go ahead and the budget value is nothing but my result. Then I put in a comma. It asks me, hey, what column should I search? So obviously you should search uh, the category and then it says, hey, give me a value to search. So you can see that in my sales table, I do not have the category column. I have to pick up this particular value, find the category of that particular product and then get it. So I can just go ahead and say, hey, do a VLOOKUP and find the category from the products table for the current value. Now note that this particular column and the products column are related. So this is going to work just fine. Now the category search is not going to be enough because I also need to make a search against the date and the date is 1st July, 2nd July, 3rd July. But any date which is not the start of the month is not available in the budgets table. So we need to turn this particular date into the start of the month date. Well, let's just do that. So I'm going to make another search and the search column two is going to be the budgets table and the period. And then I'm going to pick up this particular date and turn it into the start of the month date for which I can use the start of the month function, start of the month. And I can just use my date column, uh, my sales and my date column right here, close the bracket and press enter. One of the very important things to understand is that we have used a concatenated search. That means search for the category, search for the date. Once you have the concatenated column created or a search created, note that the answer for every single budget value should just give you one single answer. If it gives you more than one answer, then obviously this formula is not going to work and you will start to see errors. If I press enter right now, because we just have one single budget value for every category, for every period, and that's true. And therefore, we get the answers calculated correctly. And that is how you do a variety of VLOOKUP kind of situations and solve practical problems in Power BI. In case you would like to understand a few very nifty DAX tricks, I would suggest that you watch this video next. And I'm going to see you in that video. Cheers.